hey bestie <laughs> i love that intro but hey bestie we are back with another episode of common sense where i tell you about my life and i talk about a topic so we're gonna be talking about my last week which was the 15th through the 21st and honestly that week was kind of it was a move in the beginning half and then it was a flop in the latter half monday i was just getting work done like i started school tuesday i went to college it was nice we were talking about like this a and p so we were talking about bodies and stuff um wednesday i missed school because i woke up so late so i might need to stop taking early classes um tuesday was like the best day ever <laughs> like that was the best day of the year so far where i basically i got to go um in the morning i went to a p it was a quick lab it was our first day of class he was just basically like everybody got the book you were done <laughs> that's basically how he was so then in the mid day ish area i was basically working on um i wasn't working on anything i met um this harvard student and it was cool it was fun um he's a junior at harvard so that was interesting and then and then in like the afternoon ish i was like tutoring and i was working on like my book then after i did that i i met with them who shall not be named (laughs) so that was cool and it was it was a cool mood although i was a bit annoyed during that hangout session um i'm very touchy and if you don't want to be touched then don't come near me because i'm going to touch you um Wednesday was kind of a flop like it was half flop half good uh I had to go to work so we couldn't spend like the whole next day together and I was kind of mad about that plus my mom kept bugging me like she just kept asking me stuff that was annoying (laughs) um then Thursday was a day to be alive um, I had to go to this board meeting. It was a cool board meeting. I gave a little speech that I did not prepare for. I just spoke. I do that a lot. Um, in what is that? Contemporaneous, instemporaneous, something like that. It just means you say it off the cuff. Uh, I learned that as what a public speaking class. Um, yeah. So I did that until board meeting. Um. I worked on a lot of stuff, like my book. It's not like I'm like done with thirty chapters. I have twenty more to go. Um, it's more finished than that. So that's that. Then, then that was really it. I think Thursday or Friday I was recording. Um, I recorded last week's episode of Author's Purpose. Um, the 19th I also um, I don't know what else I did oh I went to class yeah I'm looking at my schedule I went to class and I worked on some um, certificates and I ended up getting two of them I got my um, proficiency in personal finance from SoFi which as a lender SoFi is bad allegedly i don't know i have not ever loaned money from anything so allegedly but that's what i hear from my favorite youtuber but i'm starting to think like it's a back a banking platform is a good place to be so i'm pretty i'm considering getting a sofi account and i also um got another certificate um and that was the entrepreneurship certificate from upenn so I got them two certificates, girlies, and I think I want, 
another like I'm gonna get a lot more like you just gonna like for these next because it's expensive it costs like 60 bucks a month to be on this platform so mm, <clears throat> I don't know why my voice sounds like that that's just my voice right now but it costs about 60 bucks a month to get the to be on these platforms to earn any certificates so I think I'm only gonna have it up until like March and I'm just gonna go ham and get about 30 certificates so um, far as far as Friday, I also um, tutored as always, and then um, and then the next Saturday, I was basically just working and redoing my schedule. I was really excited for it's this week that I'm in because I I was going to like incorporate my LLC so I was like yeah yes but we have more on that in the next episode um and then I also that's really it I just went to work and did my schedule and finished up some college homework which I have to do today as well <laughs> I kind of forgot then um Sunday I just got like stuff that I didn't do in the last week I did today and you know I did it that Sunday so and then I went to work and then I tutored yeah so I'd be tutoring at 11 p.m. through 12 a.m. like I would get my community service hours in so that week was overall meh if I add up the two ladders but beginning very solid like I was very happy and then latter I was very just mad mad and annoyed um so the topic for today is going to be the topic for today is definitely going to be yeah and this week's topic is more about the myth of meritocracy because it's like if you just try 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 do what you do what you do put in all the effort you have and you can muster then you're going to succeed and that cannot be more further than the truth in the united states and it's kind of scary how people don't even know that that's not a reality um like i was talking to um the older generation of my family and they i was asking them like do you believe sexism is a thing homophobia all of that racism and they're like no we're all equal and i'm like do you believe that we have like systems in place to keep certain demographics down um and they're like no we don't we're black people are just lazy and i'm just like wow they got they got them brainwashed and i know it's a kind of gag it's kind of a joke that you know minorities over rely on oppression and say like well they're oppressed and that's why they can't you know go out there and succeed but it's it's kind of the truth like it isn't kind of the truth it is the truth it's like you 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 started ahead you started ahead in life you started ahead in a race and now you expect me to run and catch up to you and then surpass you that's not how races work when you're talking about food on the table of course i can't spend two more extra years going to grad school when i couldn't even afford undergrad school so i just feel like i don't know how honestly like policy is going to help with you know the inherent bias our system has yes but honestly i don't know how much that will help when the root of all systemic issues and i'm gonna say this is money like i i truly believe it is money like i truly believe the root of all issues stem from money like racism it was not about like these people being lesser or these people being more it really wasn't it was just about uh, and that was an excuse so that you can get free labor so that you can make money if slaves were profitable, you wouldn't have been in Africa like, give me all of your gold and 
come over here and pick cotton. You you just wouldn't. As far as sexism, sexism, men were afraid that women would make just as much or more as them in the workplace. You see how like it always comes back to money. And the only thing I can't quite connect to money is homophobia because it's like no in my mind no clear cut reason that the straights hate the gays honestly it's it's just no reason (laughs) it's just no reason they just woke up one day and was like oh maybe it's christianity (laughs) yeah it's probably that it's probably them them misinterpreting religion um so i do think it's like money maybe yeah it's definitely multiple multiple factors but i do think money is the most heaviest weighted in a sense Uh, money religion it's time for us to become especially the u.s a non-religion religious nation we should be swearing people in not on the bible but on a law book we should be our, our oaths should not say may god bless our anthem should not say may god bless because at the end of the day um religion is just one way of viewing life just like science is one way of viewing life and ultimately i do believe we should hold legitimate science up before we hold up religion and um you know one day science may coincide with religion and we figure out like oh yes we have a deity that created all of this and if y'all want to go ahead and worship that deity go ahead but i'm just saying like you are actively making people's life worse over what you know as fiction and that's just kind of sad imagine me reading a book getting so endowed in the book that I think the characters are real and I use the ideologies in the book to judge what I see in real life so if the book says oh the moral of the story is to murder people I go out and murder people if the book says that everybody with green eyes must be punished i go out and punish everybody with green eyes i would be a sociopath i would be a psychopath i would be a path of some sort but you don't believe that's the same with the bible you know i I mean i'm just specifically talking about christianity because that's what i know best and that's what i studied in college i took history of christianity um but this goes for all the other religions and i just feel like we as humans just need to feel included in something so we gather around things the ivy league well we're all the smartest we're all the best Eh, maybe true maybe not true maybe it's just because you have a lot of money and resources whereas if i give a public school that amount of resources and money they'll do just as well um which, which another thing about the Ivy this is why we go back to the myth of meritocracy you see all of these successful people coming out of the Ivy League school don't get me wrong we, I think the Ivies are smart like I definitely think it took some dedication to start your own business in high school but at the end of the day those are not equal merits a high schooler from a public background public school that don't even have APs getting into the ivy league is not the same accomplishment as a you know white upper class person and i do i i i think and i and i just think it's time for us to realize that like because if i can call my dad up and tell him like you know you've donated 30 million to harvard let me go study under one of the professors that's a totally different thing of this professor thought i was really bright so he put me on his research paper he wanted me on his research team and i helped him like that's some totally different thing um so we just need to like that's why i said it's a myth merit is not equal and it's influenced by basically how much money you have in my in my opinion right now like 
as as with all things, this opinion will grow, and it will develop as I'm sure. But it's that's just what it comes down to in my mind. Because it's just like if you have money, you can do whatever you want, and if you don't, you have to struggle. <laughs> it's like even when we introduce race into the picture, if I'm Beyonce and a cop pulls me over and try to police a blue rock, a brutality me. I'm gonna raise way some of my money around and suddenly that whole police department is underfunded and don't have any resources so maybe it's like money influence and religion <laughs> and i don't even know how it would divide influence because since we're living in a digital age influence is definitely changing i think who had the most political i, I think who had the most influence were political figures at first they were the ones that you would be like governor i love you governor like they were this you would stand the governor you would stand the president um whereas in the digital age that's just the title to have like i mean some people are definitely especially republicans are definitely standing their presidents and their governors but i feel like at least in the democratic side it's like that's just somebody in a seat it's especially in like gen z um Whereas then, like, as we kind of, I would say, the mid to late 1900s was definitely more like, let's stand, let's stand the celebrities, let's stand the Mel- Marilyn Monroe's, even though she was not very liked in her time. They were like, let's stand celebrities, let's stand, you know, these people, paparazzi, paparazzi. And I, I do think this led into the early 2000s, especially, like, with Beyonce and Leah and all of these people. So I think, like, it, it's shifted from political figures to celebrities. And then now, in this 2024 era, it's um, content influencers, the TikTokers, the YouTubers, all of them. Now they have the influence. And I feel like, once again, this goes back to something I've already said. How are we, as a society, going to give money to people who don't have education like uh, maybe the education system snatched me up but I do think the education system plays a big role in the situation we're in and why people are so ignorant and why people are so um biased um because most of the education system the education system is your formative years it tells you how you should operate about the world. It is very hard to get rid of stuff that you learned in childhood. And we as humans, we have this bias where we basically go like, oh, um, instead of when I'm confronted with a new idea that challenges my old beliefs, analyzing it and seeing which one is right, we usually just shut down and be like, mm, let's double down. But you know, it's nor here nor there. It's just like, we need to teach the kids like that is just, what you feel inherently that's not necessarily correct you need to challenge your old beliefs constantly and yeah that was that was just not ever taught in school and it's like other stuff that needs to be taught in school is like like what i'm basically trying to say is that one we we don't live in a meritocracy because of money honestly because i'm sorry i've repeated that but that's just like what i'm coming to like this is just mostly me just talking through my ideas talking through like how i feel so that when i come back in 20 years i can be like oh that's what i thought but this is what i think now but i do think it's just it's just mostly money because like i said and even in education the school you go to is heavily dictated by how rich is your surrounding community and then not to mention private schools if you have good money big money you just send your kid to a private school that costs just as much as an ivy league education and it's like you are you get advantages that other kids don't so how is it based off merit when the only merit you had was the luck of the draw you know so if we're saying that merit is luck i mean yeah um Another feel like another thing I feel like is with jobs and how I do think this is shifting 
which is kind of scary in my opinion just a little bit how like now we have youtubers becoming millionaires and stuff like that but most of those titles were people from you know people who had big education like they had phds they had masters of business administrations they had they had that education in the past i believe most of them were business owners and stuff like that whereas our new generation of um money wealth power influence are just people that just moseying that's just moseying around that um just create little tiktok dances and i don't think that's good for the health of our society because these people know nothing about anything well i won't say that i just feel like they know nothing of we expect them to be we expect them to be our flagships we expect them to fight about the causes we care about to be ethical in reality that's never the job they signed up for so you get disappointed when your favorite singer youtuber influencer whatever they're calling yourself these days um you know get up on that stage and say the n-word or say everybody needs to work (laughs) so it's like that was never their job in the first place if you're looking for something like that then you need to look to your policymakers. you need to look for the people in congress you need to look towards your governor your president your city council you need to be looking for these political office um and i feel like the reason why we kind of strayed away from even caring about these positions is more so especially in gen z is more so because we understand that in most of the years past um these people didn't care about us like minorities that is they didn't they didn't really truly represent our issues they just wanted our vote and once they got it it was like okay i checked the box on to the next and you know that's tragic but at the end of the day they still hold the most power they still are the people that is making us go more more trillions of dollars in debt they still are the people that say you know what we're not going to go ahead and you know get rid of your student loans um and i feel like another thing that this goes back to is education you see like this is all like an interweb web that we just need to solve one string at a time um education doesn't teach kids how to be how to have empathy that's one of the things we definitely need to we definitely need to work on is these kids don't have empathy like i won't even say kids these adults don't have empathy they can't really be like oh i went through something bad but i don't want anything anything bad to happen to anything i went through something bad but i don't want anything bad to happen to anyone else they can't do that they just I went through it, so everyone must go through it. When I was a kid, I was beat, so you must be beat. Like, what's going on, bestie? That trauma. That's some trauma right there that you need to solve. So, the U.S. is a place of, um, nonsense, missense, and dissense. And I hope someone gets it together very soon because I'm getting tired of living here. Um, I love the U.S., don't get me wrong. I feel like the U.S. is, it's, honestly, I feel like since the U.S. has been on quote-unquote top and number one country, we have lived in a, we have lived in this world of relative peace. We have not been doing that much wars. We have not been, you know, having to worry about nukes when the U.S. was on top, and that's a good thing and we have to give the u.s credit for that but it's like the u.s what are you doing i think the u.s is just it's too it's too self-absorbed it's been on top for too long that now it's getting comfortable and it's not realizing that it's falling apart um so wow I, I didn't even know where to go from there. But 
this is just going to be a whole sidebar because I do feel like this comes back to meritocracy in one way or another is big tech big tech is now becoming our government i feel like um and i understand why the u.s subsidized big tech a lot in the beginning because we wanted the next big thing we wanted the next nuke so that we could stay on top and, co- and stay the global hegemon but the thing about that is it's like we have our sh- we have a shadow government. It's like, yeah, we have a president and we have Congress, but the real people are lobbying them to do whatever they want. There is in, in no world, in no world, in no official government should a private citizen tell the Pentagon, you're going to pay for this or you're not using my services. Like what excuse me excuse me (laughs) it's like the real puppet masters come down to ding 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 money (laughs) billionaires um it's like why are you guys um literally sitting here telling me that you're literally sitting here telling me that I, the government, the people that rule over you all, can't do something because you want me not to do it. <laughs> like, if that was anybody else, anybody else with a net worth of below um, five, six, seven, eight zeros, um, they would be like, womp womp, too bad. <laughs> Especially, like, with that eminent domain. Ooh, we need this. We're going to do a little reconstruction here. <laughs> Took your house. I just imagine you'd be like, actually, you're not going to take my house. The government's going to laugh in your face and tell you to scoot along. That's the energy the government needs to come in big tech with. Because honestly, it's the Elons. It's the Jeff Bezos. It's all of them that are kind of just in control of the U.S. right now. And I feel like this, this is the government's own fault (laughs) because what what did you in what world did y'all think trickle down economics would work be honest with me just be honest and maybe this is maybe they didn't want it to work conspiracy theory time maybe they did not want it to work because they are very much the one percent already like why would you want um why would you want to give up your your socioeconomic power, you just want to concentrate it down. So maybe that's why they pass these laws because I don't understand what sane human will really sit here with a straight face and tell me if I give money to the rich, they will take care of the poor. Could did you ever said in a history lesson before? Did the kings and queens take care of the peasants? And what happened to them? I thought so like it's it's not that's just not a feasible thing humans I don't want to say we're selfish by nature because I don't believe that I just feel like we have our own priorities and it is very hard to look at our other human when we're so focused on being the best or providing for our family or something like that we just get caught up in our own worlds and we start to think that the world revolves around us and quite frankly maybe the world does revolve around these billionaires because like i said you have so much money you can't even spend it it's like not having it like just imagine if you have let's say let's say you are a billionaire but all of that that one billionaire title you can't touch the money no matter what you can't withdraw it you can't add to it you can't do nothing it just sits there in that bank account forever forever would you still feel like a billionaire when you go up to a a wendy's and you can't afford a ten dollar burger even though it says you've got a billion in your account it's like no so that's the energy that i'm keeping with these billionaires you're not a billionaire you are a colonizer (laughs) (laughs) no no and it's like the only reason why you can have that money is you have to be skimming out somewhere else and usually that's in the form of 
wages that's in the form of our entry level people yeah you're not getting paid a livable salary because i need to have more money that i can't even touch because why not for the prestige i guess and guys i'm talking all of this mess but just know if i become a billionaire in the future i'm a sellout too and i got my b so get yours too (laughs) i got my billion so get yours too but no in all honesty though we i feel like it might get to the point where we just need to concentrate our money into a, a person or a few people and have them fix the problems like we we need to really be like okay you're gonna be the next billionaire and you're gonna fix these problems when you become a billionaire because only a billionaire can fix these problems because they're the one with the power <laughs> like or it's either that or just be like you know what this is not working let this whole country burn <laughs> yeah i don't want my country i want the u.s to be here for a very long time i don't want them to be like you know i don't want them to fall apart but i'm getting kind of worried because i lot a lot of people are going on these tangents about how the u.s is heading towards another civil war and honestly i'm a gen z i can't handle war that's not for me girly i'm over here looking at these little tiktoks and stuff about how um you know the Badusi's wars and all of them wars but i can't handle a real war where people are dying you get drafted and i know i'm gonna get drafted so i'm gonna be through through y'all gonna be like whoa why hasn't he posted in three months in the war fighting and i don't want to do that so we need to get this we need to get first of all we need to get our whole operations together because we gotta get we gotta get ourselves together and we gotta work internationally because i feel like a big part of this goes to i think people are finally realizing other countries is what i mean by people i feel like people are finally realizing other countries that's what i mean by people i finally realizing that we are not as perfect as we seem like the american education system used to be the envy of all and the american middle class used to be the envy of all they used to live in relative prosperity comparative to other countries but that's no longer the case we are literally a third world country with a gucci belt and that's what i'll leave this episode on i was just rambling on about things that you know i care about but Now that I'm talking about this stuff, I kind of want to do more of a deep dive. So don't be surprised if the next episode is just me clarifying what I meant in this episode. Um, thank you for listening. Goodbye.